Hey guys, it's Karen. Welcome back to Little Art Talks. And today I want to share with you guys a little toy I have here. It's the Google Cardboard. Now this is basically a virtual reality or VR platform that works as kind of like a stereoscope in conjunction with your smartphone. As you can see, this is made out of cardboard and it's intended to be a low cost platform to encourage more experimentation and engagement with virtual reality platforms in this sort of format. The cool thing is that Google actually lists all of the measurements and the schematics on their website. So if you wanted, you can purchase the pieces individually and then assemble yourself. The hardest part is just finding these lenses here. Um, or you can buy a pre-made one like this one for about $20. Now just to give you an idea, if you do go the pre-made route, it'll come in a box like this. This is just a stain. Pull this out and to assemble it, all you have to do is pull this top flap up and out. The sides will come out over here. Flip this over, Velcro it down, and the sides will also Velcro down here. This is where the phone goes, so you just slip that right here and close it up, and that's it. So let's open the Cardboard app open, and there's a bunch of different apps you can download. So let's try out this. Welcome to the Fake VR, the first app where an avatar-based world was brought to be viewed in Google Cardboard, Daydream and Oculus. The Faked VR is an art installation that we transferred for the purpose to make an VR experience easy for everyone. There have been many names given at a time where such a technology was just a vision. Morton Heilig was the first, calling it in 1950 an experience theater, a sensorama, a telesphere mask. We call it now virtual reality and we wear a head-mounted display to experience the world by turning our head and moving our body. First, get the information about the app. You have to agree to the terms of service, that's for your safety. When you start the app you'll have time to page in the information about the project and the artists behind and the how to navigate when being in the world. There is no need to hurry. That information is given before you wear the head mounted display. Please instruct everyone you hand the display over to sit on a swivel chair. It can be dangerous to turn your body and to move your head up and down when standing. When you are in flight mode you navigate by turning your body as said by sitting on a swivel chair and by moving your head up and down. The flight function you find on a menu bar that will blend slowly in when you move your head down to the floor. Later you will see how to activate one of the functions that we provide via a toolkit. Every developer can download the toolkit for free. A user does not need to download anything in addition. All to do is to download the faked VR from one of the sites. Right now are supported Google Cardboard, Daydream, and Oculus. Check at the website for updates. We are right now looking at the virtual world that became part to the world biggest digital art show The Wrong Biennale in the years 2019 and 2020. This is a two eyes capture just for demonstration. Don't think that the real world looks so primitive. There is a printed book at Blurb available and the PDF version of this book is for free to download. The title of the book is Katatonkunst. A term with quite an interesting history behind. The Mondrian machine, that creates colored boxes by using the game engine Unity. Stangen or Metal Rods is a recode of the first digital art machine coded in 1979 by Herbert W. Frank N. As said before you have to move your head down so the menu from the toolkit that was developed in Leipzig Lab by Hertzstein for the faked VR comes into view. It takes a little bit of practice so the focus point, you may say the cursor overlaps the function or the object you want to select for activation. You can't click on a Google Cardboard so we have to focus and wait that the selection is recognized. In this example the slow flight mode is being activated. Of course you can develop your own menu structure. The toolkit however provides a fast track to develop your own application. That is also helpful if you want to teach how to bring a virtual world created in Second Life or an open simulator to a VR world by using the game engine Unity as a distribution platform. Let us right now fly around like a pilot and search for, let's say, for the egg. The egg is an example that might nicely fit into many art projects. The Easter egg hunt has a tradition in virtual worlds. Nevertheless it can be any object, any prim where there is the code inside that makes the deal. By focusing the egg we get teleported to a destination that is coded in the egg. The toolkit provides this way of teleporting. This said, teleports can be easily installed in educational projects by teachers and students because in fact, 
there is no coding needed. The user of the final app has just to focus on the object. The code for teleporting is generated out of the name of the object. The name of the object has to start with CB button. There are slides where you see how to do this and what options are provided, like the time that has to pass until the teleport takes the user to the destination. This deals with different dynamics you may have in mind when you design a project. Keep in mind this video is made for educational purposes. Get your own experience by downloading the app then check out the toolkit where you will find how to code the target destination. Again you will see that you can avoid any coding. You need just to res an invisible object at the destination and name this object proper so a handshake between the TP, in this example it is an egg. And the destination can be generated by the toolkit. This is very helpful because there are different coordinate systems between the basic prim world where you create your installation and Unity, Google Cardboard and Oculus. Let us focus for a little on the navigation menu. We know it blends in when you move your head towards the floor. This video shows how the menu looks in Google Cardboard. If you like to code then you may like to change it. That's why we use a simple design in the Google Cardboard edition of the faked. In Oculus it looks different, but nevertheless we kept the functionality. You may like to explore a piece of art more in detail. For this we provide two functions. One is the stop function which is activated automatically after a TP and the other is the walk function. Let us look at the walk function. You may say it is a very slow flight by keeping more or less the height. After a while you will notice a slow drift towards the bottom. We end this demonstration with a hit. Gamers may know the term hitbox. To keep it short. When you stay too long in a specific area then you get forced teleported, you get ejected, but this time being ejected might be a good thing. It depends on the mission, the design, the message you want to transport. We use the same method as you surely remember from the egg. This said you don't need to get the coordinates for the hitbox area and transform them to VR coordinates for Google Cardboard or Oculus. All you have to do is to res a big cube in the basic prim world. This means in Second Life or an open simulator and name the cube according to the instructions given in the toolkit. The hitbox cube you can set on Phantom and give it 100% transparency so the user does not notice this area. Important for the understanding might be to know that a user in the VR worlds we talk about cannot zoom into areas. There is no native tool for this that comes in handy. To solve a question you have in mind the user has to fly into the area where you set up the puzzle, the instruction or whatever you have in mind. Usually the user will change to S mode, called also stop mode or stand. In this mode the user stays at a fixed point only being able to look up and down and to turn around. There can be many challenges inside a hitbox. The user may enter a hitbox area, they're looking around and by doing so the counter for a forced ejection starts. In the Oculus edition of the fake there is an additional option to blend textures via the control stick in, but not in the Google Cardboard. You will find many ways to combine a teleport. That was shown by the example of the egg, with the hitbox concept. You may have noticed earlier the user has changed to walk mode so to move closer to the pictures placed at the walls, to learn this way about global warming on Tuvalu. Then leaving the art installation that is hidden under the big fox, the kitsune which was made by the Japanese artist Ayuki. The slides provide you with the details. Have a great time teaching. Feel welcome to book one of the seminars Leipzig Lab is providing via the ATIS educational online platform or book a lecture at your place. Let us make VR together.